Hi there, YouTube and Facebook. Welcome to episode two of my vlog. Vlog? Is it vlog? It's pronounced vlog, right? I got a lot of positive feedback from my last video, which means that I at least, in part, have fulfilled my mission of making your news feed a happier place. Although there's still plenty of negative complaints and incoherent political rants that are, you know, plaguing my news feed, which honestly just motivates me to want to keep doing my mission, which is essentially just throwing positive vibes at you all until you shut up. No, seriously though, yesterday I saw a viral video of a puppy who was cuddling with a kitten. First line in the comment section was pretty normal. It was like, aw, super cute, winky face. And it had like 148 replies or something. And then the bottom one read, idiotic right-wing extremists who believe the Palestinians have no claim to the Gaza Strip, you xenophobic Zionist bigot. Uh, how did we... But even if the rest of the internet is pretty far gone in that regard, I still have faith in you, my friends. That said, I have another epic story to tell. Buckle in. So tell me, y'all. You like country music? Now I want to love somebody, love somebody like you. No, not that. I said country music. What I meant was country music before it turned into whatever that was. Talking about Hank Williams. The American songwriter who went down in history as the king of country music. Sorry, George Strait. Uh, you're great, too. Hank Williams was born in 1923 in Mount Olive, Alabama. A very small rural community just north of Birmingham. Hank's family didn't have a lot of money growing up. He also suffered from a serious spinal condition. But he made up for the bad hand that life dealt him with raw talent and some serious pipes. Hank developed a natural musical talent from listening to folk music on the radio, gospel choirs at church, and, of course, learning the blues from an African-American street musician by the name of Rufus Payne, who totally deserves a shout out, by the way, the most prominent founder of American country music, which is pretty universally known as white people music, so profoundly influenced by the bluesy, soulful riffs of a black man. In the early 1900s, playing for tips over by the corner store, I don't know, I think that's pretty cool that we largely, in part, have traditionally black music to thank for traditionally white music. Anyway, Hank was already playing guitar by the time he was eight years old. And by the time he was 14, he was the lead singer of his own band, Hank Williams and the Drifting Cowboys. As early as the 1940s, shortly after Hank was old enough to shave, he was traveling all over the country, playing at various venues before finally catching the attention of music producers in Nashville, Tennessee. Before long, Hank and his cowboys were cranking out hit after hit to include Move It On Over, Honky Tonkin, Hey Good Looking, Cold Cold Heart, and my favorite, because I'm a sucker for good foreshadowing, I'll Never Get Out of This World Alive. This small town country boy's dreams had come true. Using a buttery voice and that charming stage personality. Hank had fame and fortune and everything that goes with it. Which unfortunately often includes not so fun things like alcoholism and crippling drug addiction. Worsened by his medical condition, Hank faced serious troubles throughout his life, which led him to heavy morphine and alcohol abuse. Williams struggled through heartbreak, multiple divorces, and serious emptiness, which he wrote about in a number of poems, reflecting his thoughts on God and the afterlife, which he released under the pseudonym Luke the Drifter. Despite commercial success, Hank's demons wrestled him to his grave. Williams died on New Year's Day in 1953. He was just 29 years old. However, where Hank's life ended, his legacy certainly didn't. His son, Hank Williams Jr., a.k.a. Bo Cephas, carried on the tradition of country music in the family, gaining some remarkable success of his own. Cause a country boy can survive, you know, like in a metaphorical sense. Cause Hank Williams is super dead. Williams was awarded a spot in the Country Music Hall of Fame and an honorary award by the Pulitzer Prize Board for songwriting. There was also an awesome movie made about him a few years ago. It's all about his life and starring Tom Hiddleston. It's called I Saw the Light. So if Nashville and the rest of the country music world immortalizing tank... Mm -hmm. Tank Williams. Tank Williams! Tank Williams! I'm cutting that last part. There's no way that part's staying in. If that ending wasn't good enough for you, well, this story's got a pretty bizarre epilogue. In the early 1980s, decades after Hank Williams' death, 30-something singer-songwriter Kathy Louise Dupree was doing a little personal family history project. Dupree was raised by adoptive parents, but she never knew the identity of her biological parents. So, after a little investigation once she was an adult, Dupree stumbled upon a rather alarming discovery. Unknown to the rest of the world, she discovered that she was actually the illegitimate daughter of Hank Williams and Bobby Jett, a short-term girlfriend of his in between marriages. Dupree was born a few days after Hank Williams had died. Then she was adopted by Jet. A few years later when Jet died, Dupree was adopted again. She never knew her birth parents. And when she found evidence for it, she probably flipped. You freaking imagine? You're a country singer, and one day you discover evidence proving that you're the long-lost daughter of Hank Williams. Mm -hmm. Hank Williams. 
What followed was a pretty complicated legal drama involving the discovery of a missing custody contract and a long battle over soul rights with her half-brother Bocephus. You can't make this stuff up! It's like something that was made up in a movie! Or a country song. Hank Williams' story is tragic and hopeful at the same time. Was he a perfect man? Of course not. A remarkable man? An awesome man? Absolutely. For even if the evil in his life managed to overcome him during his time on Earth, he inspired millions of others with his music, with his poetry, with his, with his story. And in Hank's words, Thank you for all the love you gave me. There could be no one stronger. Thank you for the many beautiful songs. They will live long and longer. See you next time, guys. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy, no sorrow inside. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Evan, you need to stay on harmony. Sorry.